Welcome to Divorce, Dating, and Empowered Living with your host, Rosalind Sedaka. Join Rosalind each week on a journey toward overcoming life's many challenges to achieve peace, empowerment, and positive transformation. It's time to relax, unwind, and transform your life with Rosalind Sedaka. Hello, everyone. This is Rosalind Sedaka, and you're listening to Divorce, Dating, and Empowered Living on WGSNDB, the Going Solo Network. As you know, I am a divorce and parenting coach as well as a dating and relationship coach, and I have guests that I interview each week talking about issues that are important to anyone who is looking for a healthy relationship, breaking out of a relationship, and wanting to move on in in life in the best and most empowered way possible. And today is no exception. I'm very excited to be introducing our guest. Her name is Ronnie and Ryan, and um, Ronnie is a coach who has been um, a a singles coach for more than 15 years, and she's helped successful women with a hot career but a chilly love life to find love. And her practical and proven methods help clients attract quality prospects, and she's radically simplified Understanding Men to End Confusion and Frustration. Ronnie is the author of three books and one bestseller and has been featured on ABC, NBC, and Fox News, as well as BBC, NPR, Huffington Post, and eHarmony. So she is a lady who knows her stuff, and we're going to be talking today about the seven first date mistakes that women make that can stop them from having second and third dates. And the, to describe the topic, let me say this. You have a great time with a guy, but you don't hear from him again. You thought you had a great connection. You know he enjoyed himself. How could this happen? You feel heartbroken and disappointed when he doesn't ask for a second or third date. If only you knew what went wrong and what mistakes you made so you could do better next time. If this sounds like you, stop worrying. Learn about mistakes you might be making without even realizing it in this insightful interview with dating coach Ronnie Ann Ryan. So, Ronnie, I am thrilled to have you with us today, and welcome. Thank you, Ross. I'm happy to be here. Great. So why don't we move ahead, because this is a topic that we have a lot of areas to cover, and it's a topic that every one of us has experienced in one way or another. So, what is the first mistake that you find, and how can you help us get through this? Well, you know, the very first mistake I want to talk about isn't even on the list, and that is that you might not have made a mistake at all. And I think that's an important place to start, because sometimes you just didn't have the connection, even if you had a great time and he had a great time. Or you might not be the right woman for him, or he might not be ready to date. So just keep in mind... It isn't always something you did wrong. Sometimes it's just it just doesn't work out. Mhm. So I think that's really important because a lot of times women blame themselves and they assume they did something wrong. But here are some things that might occur, and if you're doing any of these things, these are what you want to pay attention to, and then you can correct the mistake. So the first one is. Even if you had to rush to get there and you hit traffic and whatever, don't start by talking about how bad your day was. Oh, I love that. It's a, you know, it's a human thing to do. Oh, my, there was so much traffic and I, my boss was nowhere, my kid was sick. And all of that might be true. But just like on a job interview, you probably get, I don't know, 10, 17 seconds at the most to make your first impression, and you don't want to start off with the details of your bad day, traffic, or how hard it was to park. So you don't get a second chance to make that first impression, you know what I mean, Raz? Totally. I love that. I think that's a really, really important uh, point to make, so thank you for starting there. Yeah, and that's why I recommend not being late. Like, I'm the queen of late. I'm always late. But try really hard to be on time so that you don't have that rushed feeling and then you're not talking all about it to calm yourself. You want to come here calm, collected, check your makeup before you go in there so that you can be in the best mindset 
when you meet somebody new. So that makes sense. Absolutely. Okay. Now, I want to just approach it from his perspective, too, and say that, you know, you know, he might have empathy for your situation or whatever, but remember, he wants to date a woman who has her act together, and he wants to date a woman who's positive and happy. So that's the front that you want to show. I think that's really relevant to, to bring up. Sometimes we forget that, and we don't look at things from the other person's perspective. So thanks for making that point. Yeah, and that, and that is, it's very important because you're not just there to judge him. He's there to determine if he wants to date you too, right? Absolutely. Yeah, so let's not forget. All right, number two, and this happens sometimes, you know, maybe you had a hard day or a hard week and you have one drink and then you think another one sounds good and, you know, if you have two or three, maybe you drink, maybe you're having too many drinks in front of him on a first date. The last thing you want to do is give anybody the impression that you drink too much. And it ha- can happen so naturally if you're tired or you're stressed and you're nervous. Any of these things might have you order more drinks than you normally would. And I can tell you, Patty Stanger, the millionaire matchmaker, always has a two-drink limit, you know. I don't know if you know mm-hmm. her from Bravo TV. But yes, yes. I think on a first date, one drink could really be enough because you want your first date to be short, you know, maybe an hour, an hour and a half at the outside, and then you want to wrap it up and get going, even if you're having the time of your life, because this way you leave him wanting more. So you don't need to stay long enough that you're going to have one drink an hour, which is like the legal limit or whatever. You want to avoid... I totally... Totally agree with you, and you want to be on your game, too. So you don't want to be sloppy. You don't want to be uh, making excuses for yourself on another date. And you want to also be alert so that your antenna is working and picking up energy and vibes from him to make sure this is someone you want to date again. Yeah. Yeah, really good point. So, you know, you want to keep your head clear in case he you know, make promises or you have promises you have to keep to yourself about your own behavior. You know, um, you want to keep yourself in check. You want to pay attention to what's happening with him. And you don't want to look like you have a drinking problem, whatever it is. Even if you don't, you don't want to even risk looking like you do. So, totally uh, agree. Two drink minimum is the best way to go. All right, number three is, this is really hard, I know, let's be first. Busy single women who are dating and have kids or have elder care and have a job and whatever, you know, you want to just get to the point, but I'm going to encourage you not to make your first date about qualifying him against your wish list. And this is huge because the first date should really be just to see if you can have a conversation. Do you get each other's sense of humor? You know, can you enjoy talking to this person, and will he enjoy talking to you? And one thing I can pretty much guarantee is that if you make that first date about asking him all these qualifying questions to see if he's your perfect partner, you are not going to be fine. Just how it is. He's going to feel like he's a steak and you're grilling him. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And that is not fun. You know, I always talk about the difference between conversation and interrogation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're not the same. I love that distinction. <laughs> that that is that is crucial, and you're right. And we need to put ourselves in the other person's shoes to feel what it's like when you're just being blasted with with questions and feeling you're being dissected. Yeah, it's not fun. And you know, men and women want to be with people who are fun to be with and easy to mm-hmm. be with. We all want that, regardless of gender. And so in order to make that true for you, you don't want to ask all these intense, pointed questions. And a lot of times the truth is, I know you want to know those things, but those things are probably more on a need-to-know basis because somebody needs to earn trust to hear the intimate details of why someone got divorced. Like, you might want to know, why did you leave your wife? Why did you get divorced? And, you know, what happened? 
But honestly, that's not a fun topic for a first date. It, it's just not going to lead you down a road to laughter and enjoyment. In addition, you know, when you talk about why you got divorced, you're never going to show yourself in your best light because it's a hard place to be and a hard thing to go through. And if you think about this like a job interview, you also don't want to talk like, you don't want to talk about your old boss or your old job or your current job as if it was bad because then people think you'll be bad mouthing them. So the best thing to do, don't qualify a man. You can ask a couple questions, but be really careful not to overdo it because more than anything, you just want to have a good time. You want to talk about some things like, I don't know what you recommend, Russ, but I, I recommend talking about, like, vacation and hobbies and what kind of pizza you like, you know? Easy mm-hmm. thing. Yeah, and, and finding mutual interest and being having a sense of humor and being able to laugh at yourself and, and things that, that you enjoy. And, and even if you were asking those questions, you're not as likely to get honest, authentic answers on the first date as you might after you've been dating a while and you're really talking about these subjects after there's a level of trust that's been established, don't you think? Yeah, I think that's huge. I don't think you're going to get a straight answer anyway. I mean, if somebody asked me, I haven't been divorced, but if I had, I wouldn't be blurting out what really happened in my marriage. It's nobody's business. Mm-hmm. But you'll get mm-hmm. to that. So, you know, you can ask one or two qualifying questions, but don't make the you know, that first date is a really hard point of question. So, you know, get one or two in on the first date and then just enjoy. Get a couple more in on the second date if you're lucky to have one and then just enjoy. And then by the third date, you're going to get to know each other a little and you might tell a little bit more. And that's how the trust starts to build with time, just like you said, Rob. So that's my recommendation. Well, I, I think that's definitely on target advice. I'm going to stop one moment here so we can take a break. You've been listening to Rosalind Sedaka interviewing Ronnie Ann Ryan on WGSNDB, the Going Solo Network. The show is Divorce, Dating, and Empowered Living, and we'll be right back. You're listening to WGSNDB, Going Solo Network, Singles Talk Radio Channel, where we take a lighthearted and candid approach to discussions on the journey of relationship loss, divorce, parenting, being single, relationships building, dating, and yes, sex. Join our listeners and begin living your best life. Okay, everyone, we are back on WGSNDB, the Going Solo Network. This is Rosalind Sedaka on Divorce, Dating, and Empowered Living. We're talking to Ronnie Ann Ryan, and we're talking about mistakes that women make on first dates that may keep them from having second or third dates. So let's continue on the list of some of the most important things to understand so you can not make those mistakes. Thanks, Ronnie, for sharing these with us. Oh, it's my pleasure. You know, I'm all about educating people about what works because that's the way you're going to find love the fastest. Okay, so mistake number four is try really hard not to complain about other men or dating mm-hmm. or work or health or finances or your kids because he's mm-hmm. actually not on that date with you to hear your list, your list of complaints, especially about other men because men are sensitive people too and Mm -hmm. if you went out with a guy who started complaining about women and how he's been burned a few times and taken as a cleaner through his divorce and whatever I don't think you're going to look at him with the same in the same way as you would look at somebody who was positive and said nice things about the women in his life the same thing goes for you you don't want to complain in general, but you really don't want to complain about men to a man you just met. It's just not going to go over big, and he's going to take it personally, even if it has nothing to do with him. Obviously, you don't know him. It probably doesn't. And that's why you don't want to complain about dating either. Sometimes women sit down and they just start talking about how hard dating is and how hard online dating is and how it's so unfair or it's draining. See, again, these are not fun topics. You want to always promote your best self and be positive wherever you can. So leave your complaints to your girlfriends or for close family members who you know will listen and be supportive. 
don't bring that complaint with you on your first or second date. And um, I'm so glad you are sharing this with our listeners because it is vitally important to understand that and to remember when the tables are turned, if you were dating someone who was doing that, what do you feel like when you're listening to someone who's bitching and complaining about women? It's certainly a turn off. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't look at that guy and think, oh, isn't he sweet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's going to treat me really well, you know. No, he's not going to, you know. But it's not a good sign when they start complaining about women. So the same goes for the ladies. Don't complain about men. But if you can, avoid talking about any of your problems because you want to show up and be who you really are as your best self, as the most fun person that you are when things are good. You want to present the good side of yourself. And, you know, this isn't being dishonest. It's just presenting your best self. Nobody needs needs to hear all your dirty laundry right up front. So be positive and talk about positive topics. Totally agree. Great. So this leads me right into number five, which is perfect segue to not talk about your ex. And this is huge and it always amazes me how many women want to go into a first date and talk about their divorce and talk about their ex and kind of commiserate about all of that stuff and you know your first date is not the place and time for that keep in mind you know if you talk about your ex and he talks about his ex it's kind of like bringing them on the date with you you know yes Four people on your date instead of two. Two is a romantic number. Four, <laughs> you know, four you play bridge with, right? <laughs> I think that's a great point. So don't bring your ex with you through conversation, and let's hope he doesn't bring his ex either. And let me tell you, if he does talk about his ex a lot, pay attention because that means he's not ready to date. He's not emotionally clear and available if he's on a first date with you and all he wants to do is talk about his ex, whether he thinks she was great and he misses her or he thinks she was a witch and he hates her, it doesn't matter. If he's talking about her with you, he's not available. I, I agree. I think that's a very important point, and I'm glad you're bringing that up because that your radar should be sending a warning sign to you if, if that's what you're hearing. And we all understand that we only want to be with really emotionally available men. Yeah, exactly. So it's a good tip-off if somebody's not really ready to date and they're not going to be fully present and be able to give you their heart, walk away. That's mm-hmm. what you need to do. Number six, and this is always really surprising to women, but you don't want to talk about how busy you are. Because, you know, today women really are busy, and men are busy too, but there are a lot of men who have become very sensitized about busy women. And there's a lot of women that are just very hard to nail down about going out on a date, and they just go on and on about how busy they are, whether they have a very taxing job or they have children they have to run around to soccer and dance lessons or music or whatever or tutoring. It doesn't really matter. He wants to know that he could be a priority in your life. And if you go on and on about how busy you are, and then you're really hard to set up a date with, there's a lot of other women out there. So you might be busy, and that's okay. But when he asks when, you know, he could see you again, try not to make it two weeks from then. Because there is a shelf life on his interest in you. (laughs) And that's why... You do not want to talk about how busy you are because that is a massive turnoff to most. I love that phrase. There's a shelf life on his interest with you. That's that's great, and I think that's very relevant. And you don't hear that mentioned very much in the singles world to to understand the fact that you want people who are eager to make a space and create a place for a healthy relationship if, if you happen to be a good fit. So you, by starting and saying the opposite, I could barely find the time to be dating you, you're not really off to a very good start towards relationships. And then you may wonder why no one is asking you out again. 
Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's really difficult when you're that busy. So many times women tell me, you know, I really don't have time to date. I just need to meet the man. And and I have to let them know that <laughs> a relationship will actually take more time than this dating process will. So if you don't have time to date, you don't have time for relationships. Good point. Very important to understand. Ronnie, before you, you move ahead with anything else, I wanted to give our listeners an opportunity to find out how to find you and access your services. So why don't you tell us how we can reach you and what services you provide? Well, thank you. Okay, well, first and foremost, I offer private coaching. I have a variety of different packages. We talk on the phone, and I give you the guidance and insights you need to find love faster. I also have a lot of materials I share with my clients in terms of recordings and books I've written, etc. But also, I have a very active blog, and you can find that at never to t o o late dot biz. So it's n e v e r t o o l a t e dot b as in boy i z. And I also have a gift today. Should we talk about that now, or should we? Wait? Absolutely, yes. Let's let's find out about that. So I'm very excited to offer anyone who listens to this podcast 10 myths about online dating that could keep you single. And you can find that on my website, nevertoolate.biz slash one zero and the word myths, M-Y-T-H-S, myths. So it's nevertoolate.biz slash 10 myths. And you'll get that free report on the 10 myths about online dating. That could really keep you single. It's just so many misconceptions, and I want to help clear them up. I think that's great. That's a wonderful gift. Thank you so much. Looks like we have time for one more mistake to share, so tell us what number seven is. Number seven is don't spill your guts. Now, a lot of times, I'm going to admit to you, when I was dating Roz, I did this once or twice. Me too. You did? Uh, you yes. Know, like, I had this really cute man in front of me. He was so handsome, and he was nice. And he was like the first nice guy I'd met who actually seemed interested in whatever. And so, I don't know, he he was just such a good listener. I just started telling him about everything that was going on with me and what had happened through some of my dates or whatever. And and he was so sweet, and he sat there, and he listened to me, and he was supportive and whatever. And he certainly never called me again because... I spilled my cup to this guy. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know him. And, you know, I do sometimes interview, I mean, a, a coach men, and it's amazing how many men have told me, what is it with women? They sit down in front of me, and I'm then, like, well, I'm a nice guy, and they want to just spill their guts and tell me all this stuff, and I'm like, whoa, you know? Mm. So it doesn't make you a fun date. Really, if you want to get a second date, try to be a fun first date. Be positive, be upbeat, be fun, talk about fun topics, and enjoy yourself and enjoy him. That's the best way to get a second date. I think that's good advice. Thank you. And also you want to make sure that you have healed yourself before you get out there in dating so that you're not more vulnerable to making some of the mistakes that Ronnie's been talking about. Do get the coaching first. So that when you are out there dating, you are the best version of you. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, it's so important because if you really want to attract those kind of quality guys, the guys that you dream of, the supportive, good guys who are going to have your back, you have to be able to connect with them at that heart level. And the only way you're going to do that is if you're solid in who you are, if you value yourself and know that you're worthy, if you have good boundaries and you have confidence, Confidence is the number two thing men look for in women after honesty. Mm. That's an important point to keep in mind. So thank you for, for making that. That's very relevant. Why don't you share with us one more time your website address so people know where to find you, and then I'm going to ask you to leave us with a takeaway tip. Okay, good. So you can find me at nevertoolate.biz, and if you want to just put a slash, And then 10 Myths, you'll get my free gift, 10 Myths About Online Dating. And the last takeaway tip is this. Uh, (laughs) What you want to do is make sure you don't just talk about yourself, but of course, listen to him. Mm. You want to make sure you're curious about him and ask questions about him as well. 
Once in a while we forget and we talk about ourselves, but make sure you listen as well. I think that's really an important uh, message for everyone to to leave with. Being a good listener is an important skill on any phase of relationships, beginning right through to having a serious, committed relationship. We need to hone our listening skills. Why not start early on on that very first date? Because everyone is more attractive when they're a good listener. Yeah, it's a conversation trick sometimes. If you can just listen and ask interesting questions, somebody will think you're a fabulous conversationalist, even though they've just been talking about themselves. But it's a great way to go. True. Wonderful, wonderful takeaway for us. Thank you so much, Ronnie and Ryan. I so appreciate this was a very valuable interview. You covered a lot in a very short time, so thank you so much. And you've been listening to Divorce, Dating, and Empowered Living with Rosalind Sedaka on the Going Solo Network, WGSN-DV. And if you want to learn more about the resources that I have available and coaching services, you can find me at womendatingafter40.com. That's 40, womendatingafter40.com. And I have a free ebook to download right at that website. Until next time. Look forward to hearing and speaking with you all again at the Going Solo Network on Divorce, Dating, and Empowered Living. Thanks so much. Bye-bye for now.